Welcome to this brief introduction to Raw Power as a standalone app. I will be covering the basics of the user interface and workflow. There are other videos on this channel that go into detail about specific features, as well as a video about Raw Power as a Photos extension. All the features apply whether you are using Raw Power to browse images in the file system or the Photos library. The user interface is divided up into four panels. On the left is the browser. If you are browsing the file system, then you can put frequently viewed folders in the favorite section. Below that is where you put the bulk of the folders that you want to browse with the app. For example, you might have your pictures folder here or some directories from an external drive. I'll switch to the photo library window so you can see what that looks like. The favorites area can hold albums and the rest of the photo library is below that, including a recent section managed by Raw Power, the built-in albums from photos, as well as your own albums. On the right is the info and edit panel. When you're just browsing images, the info area displays metadata about your image. When you start editing an image, that panel switches to display the editing controls. In the middle is where images appear. There are three different ways for images to be displayed in raw power. Right now, we're looking at the thumbnail grid. If I want to see a mix of a large image and a film strip, I can click the viewer button. Now the view changes to a large individual image and a film strip. I have control over the thumbnail size in the toolbar here. If I press the thumbnail button, then the thumbnail area disappears. In addition to hiding the thumbnail in the viewer, all of the other panels can be hidden as well through buttons or menu commands. For example, I can hide the browser. You will find all of these choices in the view menu. I recommend using contextual menus to find out about specific commands for that part of the interface. Either right click or control click. Other controls of interest are in the toolbar. You can add tabs, sort images, flag, rate, or tag them. On the right, there's a filtering interface to help you find images, a button to show you background operations, such as background export, a control to show and hide the info area, a quick look button, which will bring up an image quickly, which is very useful if you just have the thumbnail grid visible. You can press the space bar, just like you would in the finder, or use that button. To edit an image, click the Edit button. The top row contains tools. The first two are Rotation and Flip. The third is the Show Original button to view the image without adjustments applied. Next is an Info button to show you some shot information that might be useful during editing. And then the Zoom controls. Below that are buttons to add adjustments or presets. Next is the histogram. You can show and hide the histogram by clicking the little disclosure triangle. The circles next to the histogram indicate if there are overexposed or clipped parts of the image. You can click the circles to get a visual overlay of the overexposed areas. The check boxes next to each adjustment are used to turn on and off adjustments. This is useful for seeing the effect of an individual adjustment. For example, I'll turn on and off the vignette. You don't have to click the checkbox to start editing. Just move a slider and it will enable the adjustment automatically. For example, I can just grab the saturation slider here. The circle with the three dots contains extra options for each adjustment. For example, this is where you can reset an adjustment back to its default values. Or add or remove it from the default set of adjustments that appears on each image. When you are finished, click the Done button. All edits in raw power are non-destructive. That means the editing information is stored separately from the original, so your original is never touched. Thanks for watching this quick tour of the user interface of raw power. 